What's going on guys? John Alder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're going to look at checkboxes for Kivi and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at checkboxes for Kivi. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership with all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, it is the Monday morning after Christmas. Hope you guys had a great Christmas. We had a really nice Christmas here in Vegas. And in this video, I'm gonna look at checkboxes. And checkboxes are super important. You can use them for all sorts of different things. And you can see we're gonna build this very, very basic sort of pizza app where you can pick your toppings. And when we click on this, it sort of adds these items to the list. And if you unclick them, it takes them off. So very basic, but very useful. And there's checkboxes aren't hard, but there's sort of a lot of little moving parts. And so we really need to wrap our heads around this. And that's what we're gonna do in this video. So I've got two files, check.py and check.kv. This is our basic Kivi starter code that we always have. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. So let's head over to our check.kv file. And you can see I've got a box layout. We got it set to vertical and the root width and height. So it expands to the whole size of the app as we always do. So let's come over here and let's create a label. And let's say, uh, give this a text of select pizza topping or toppings, I suppose. And let's give this a font underscore size of 32 to make it sort of bigger. Now, let's create some check boxes and some text. And to do this, I'm gonna sort of wrap all this in a quick little grid layout. Just to sort of keep track of all this stuff. And let's give it a calls of two. So there's two columns, one with a label and one with a check box. And let's create a label. And the first one will have text of, let's say, pepperoni. And let's give this a font underscore size of like 20. So it's bigger, but not quite as big as our main header up here. And now we can give this a check box. Make sure the B in box is also capitalized. And here we just want to call on active. And let's call root dot checkbox underscore click. Now you can call this anything you want. It doesn't have to have the word checkbox in it, but this is a checkbox and we're gonna be clicking it. So it makes sense for me to call this checkbox click and we'll create this in just a second. Now in here, we wanna pass self and we wanna pass self.active. And we'll take a look and see what these are in just a second. And, but for now, let's just go ahead and save this and uh, sort of start to build this thing out before we add more of these checkboxes and get into the more complicated parts of this. Let's build a, a very basic, function of this and play around with it a little bit. So let's head over to our check.py file and inside of our main my layout class here, let's define this function. And let's just pass for now. And inside of here, we want to pass self. We also want to pass instance. And we also want to pass value. Now the instance is just the instance of the checkbox. We have to pass it. Uh, you're not really going to use this. This is going to give you sort of like a address in memory of the checkbox, which is not really useful. This value will pass true or false, a Boolean, true or false. So if you click it, it will pass true. If you unclick it, it will pass false. If you don't click it, it won't pass anything. But if you've clicked it and then unclicked it, it will pass false. If you just click it, it'll pass true. So right off the bat, let's just really quick, let's print the value just to see what this is returning. So let's go ahead and save this. Head back over here and let's run this guy. So let's call Python check.py. And we get a jumbled mess of stuff. It is Monday morning after Christmas and it looks like I already messed something up. <laughs> we knew that was gonna happen though, right? So, okay, let's take a look and see. All right, so we've got our box layout. We've got this guy. We need to move this over and move this over. Okay, much better. There we go. Okay, so let's save this and run it. Hopefully this makes more sense now. Okay, so we've got our heading here. We've got pepperoni. When we click this, nothing seems to have happened. But if we close this, we could see it's passing true, right? If we want to run this again and click it, now it'll put true on the screen. Now if we unclick it, it should also say false. And down here, sure enough, it says true and false. If we really want to kind of play around with this thing, we could, let's see, let's go back over here. And instead of value, let's just print out that instance. There you go, spell that right. Just so you can see what this is returning. 
And like I said, this is not useful in any way, but we can at least look at it. So we can click it, close it, and you can see we get this kivi.ux checkbox checkbox object and this weird looking address and memory. Again, not useful in any way. So, okay, this is all the stuff we're getting. So what can we do with this now? Well, we don't wanna print this out. So what we can do is we can play with this value. We could say, hey, if our value equals true, do something else, do something else, right? So what do we wanna do? Well, first off, let's come back over here and let's create another label outside of our grid layout, sort of below our checkboxes. And for here, I don't know, let's not put anything, but let's give this an ID of, I don't know, output underscore label, right? So now we can do stuff to this label if this thing has been checked. So let's go ahead and save this, come back over here. If the value is true, let's have self dot IDS dot output label dot text, and let's set that equal to true. Else, let's set it equal to false. So, okay, this might be cool. Let's go ahead and run this and see. And so we've got our pepperoni in our checkbox. If we click this, it says true. If we unclick it, it says false. Boom, true, false, true, false. And that's pretty cool. So if there's just one checkbox, this is all you really need, right? So you can check to see if it's been checked or not. You can take some sort of action if it has been checked. You can take some other sort of action if it hasn't been checked. And that's great. But we probably want more than one checkbox. So if we come over here, let's also, when we when we click the checkbox thing, we're passing self, we're passing self.active. Let's pass a third thing here. Let's pass pepperoni because that's what our text is. That's what the choice we're making is. So if we did that and we can come back over here and in our function here, we're passing self, we're passing instance, we're passing value. Let's also pass something called topping or you know, call it whatever you want. So now instead of this, we could, let's say, let's create an F string and pass in that. And we might say something like you selected topping, right? So now if we save this and run it, and if we click pepperoni, it says you selected pepperoni, and that's sort of a little more useful. And if we unclick it, it still says false. So, okay, now we can have bunch, uh, now we can have a lot of checkboxes, and whenever we click one, we'll know exactly what we've passed, right? Because we've added that little thing on to the end there. So let's go ahead and make some more checkboxes. So head back over here, and I'm just gonna kind of copy all of this and paste it in a couple of more times here. Make sure your indentation is correct. So here, instead of pepperoni, we might have cheese. And then here, we're gonna wanna pass in cheese, All right? And then down here, we might have something else like mushroom, whatever, just an example. And here, we're gonna wanna pass in mushroom. Now, this will kind of work, but not really. So let's see here, we can run this again. So now we have several of these. If we click this, it says you selected pepperoni. Now it says you selected cheese. Now it says you selected mushroom. And if we unclick them, it says false. Now this is not that useful because we're only keeping track of one thing at a time here. We wanna be able to keep track of all of them. So here we're gonna to need to hack around a little bit on our Python code. So let's head over to checks.py. And I don't know, there's probably a zillion different ways you could do this. I'm gonna create uh, a Python list called checks. And then anytime we click on one of these, I'm just gonna append our topping to this Python list, right? So if it's true, what do we wanna do? We want to call my underscore layout dot checks, and we wanna dot append onto there the topping, right? And I'm calling my layout dot checks just because that's sort of how you make this global inside of a class, one of the ways at least, without sort of creating another instance variable thing and doing a whole thing. So this is a quick and easy way this should work. So now down here, instead of toppings, we're gonna wanna print out 
checks, right? Or more specifically, my layout dot checks. Okay, so that should do the trick. Now we also want to do the same thing for false. So I'm just going to copy this whole thing. And whenever we unclick a thing, instead of appending, we want to remove. And this will remove our topping from our checks list. And we should be good to go there. And I'm just going to copy this whole thing. And instead of printing out false, let's go ahead and do it like that. So okay, this will sort of do the trick. This will print out a Python list, there'll be little brackets, which is not ideal. So we're gonna have to fix that. But we can at least test this really quick to see if it's sort of working. So we've got pepperoni, we can click this, uh, cheese and mushroom. And you can see it's adding it to a list and it's printing out the whole list, which is not ideal. So we could fix that. But it does work, we can check and uncheck things. And that's cool. So pretty simple. So now we need to get rid of these brackets, right? So how do we want to do that? Let's see, let's come here and let's create a variable called um, output, or tops for toppings, right? And let's set that equal to nothing. And let's just do a quick loop through this checks and append things to this tops variable. So let's take everything from our list and add it to a, a variable that we can then print out down here. So we could just go very quickly for x in this is gonna be my layout dot checks. What do we want to do? Well, we want tops to equal and I'm just gonna create a quick little f string. And I'm gonna call this tops. And then we also want to add x. Right. So then down here, instead of printing out my layout dot checks, we would print out tops, right. So that should do the trick. And I'm just gonna sort of copy this and come down here and do the same thing in our else statement, and then come over here and replace this with tops as well. Okay, so I think that should do the trick. Quick and easy hack there. You get the idea. Pepperoni, cheese and mushroom and it's nice and formatted. And we can add things and remove things and just that easy. So those are checkboxes, uh, pretty easy, right? A couple of little weird moving parts, there may be easier ways to do this, but uh, this kind of works for me. And it's quick and easy. Again, just remember on active, call your function, you're passing self self dot active. And if you want to pass something else so that you can identify what checkbox it is, that's a good way to do it. It's probably another way to do it than that. But like I said, that works for me. And then just remember when you're uh, creating your function in here, your method, you pass self, you also pass instance, don't forget that you're going to want to forget that because it doesn't really do much anything or it doesn't seem to do much of anything. And you also want to pass your value. And then if you've added a little thing to the end, you also obviously want to pass that in here, because this function is going to be looking for four things. So you need four variables right here. And that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off membership save pages, $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.